Teaching is not just about delivering information. It's about fostering an environment where curiosity thrives and students become lifelong learners. Welcome back to Teacher Tales, where we give you the keys to overcoming teacher burnout to find work-life balance and educational bliss, if it still exists. On this interview episode of Teacher Tales, creating the learning environment takes center stage. Learn the art of encouraging curiosity and providing constructive feedback, both essential elements of fostering a deep understanding of any subject. Finally, discover the power of embracing technology while building a positive learning environment. These lessons are the keys to unlocking a world of knowledge for students as lifelong learners. Mr. Oz, thank you, obviously, for coming on the show. No problem. Um, I guess first we just got to start with your story. Like, tell us how you got into being a teacher and just the different roles that you do. Yeah. Um, so I actually graduated uh, with a degree in biology, and I was a zookeeper for about three years. <laughs> um, yeah, different start than most. Um, and while I was a zookeeper, though, I did, had to do, like, educational tours and mm -hmm. educational talks. Um, and that was actually kind of my favorite favorite part of the job. Um, and then uh, from being a zookeeper, I went to work at Rainforest Cafe as the curator. Mm -hmm. um, so I took care of all the aquariums and dove in the aquariums, took care of the fish. And then same thing, we would have actually school groups come in and do like field trips there and then have lunch. Um, and I would talk them through like the rainforest, talk about gorillas and the elephants and then the aquariums. And again, my favorite part was doing the tours and the education right. and teaching people about animals. Um, and so that's kind of when I decided to switch careers and get into education. And I did a alternative uh, pathway in Tennessee. And so I just had my bachelor's already, so I just needed to get mm -hmm. my teaching license. So when you decided to become a teacher, what are some of the things that you kind of thought of or that you had heard that was caused you some apprehension? Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, definitely. My mom uh, is a teacher or was a teacher. She retired. Okay, uh, shout she, out. Yeah, she taught at Chicago Public Schools for 35 years. Chicago? Was, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, and then actually my sister is also a teacher. You know, I saw my mom always coming home with like loads of schoolwork and grading. And this mm -hmm. was obviously, you know, 20 years ago. Um, so it was all still paper and hand and nothing yep. like computers and laptops. But they also told me a lot of the good reasons to get into teaching. Yeah. Um, and how they said they would never do anything other than teaching, even though they cautioned me to go into it or not to go into it. Um, and so I said, well, I'll, I'll try it. And if it's not for me, I can always get out and change careers again. <laughs> I always go back to being a zookeeper. Yep. <laughs> so you get your first teaching job. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you started at charter schools, which is very different than public schools. So yes. you are able to offer a unique perspective. So I guess talk about that first time you go into a classroom. What did it look like? How did you, how did you feel? And uh, like, what grade was it? Yeah. Um, so this is a charter in Nashville. I taught fifth grade science. Okay. And I will say that charters are a lot more work, but I definitely feel like for first year teachers, they prepare you really mm -hmm. well for being the one in charge of a classroom. Um, our PD was several weeks longer than oh, like most wow. public schools. Yeah, and Dang. it's not like time to set up your room. It's like three weeks of role playing, having teachers act like students. Oh, so a real PD. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was you know constant deliverables of like what are all the routines you're gonna have for your classroom? Like how are kids gonna sharpen pencils? How are they gonna walk in? How are sharpen they gonna pencils. exit? Yeah. It was almost like every minute of their day like planned out so that when it happens you knew how to react. Wow. Okay. So just thinking about myself as a teacher, there's no way I could plan out every minute of my day. It, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. So you feel like going through that kind of training really prepared you to be a good teacher, not just thrown in the classroom. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was everything you could think of happening in a classroom. They pretty much had a scenario for it in PD the weeks before school. So you go into a charter school, you're doing fifth grade, and I know you've bounced around a lot. Mm -hmm. You've done middle school, and now you're doing high school. 
So what's the difference, you know, between a charter school and the public school? Um, I think for charter school, one of the big differences is uh, discipline. So it's much more structured there. Nice. Yeah. Um, it, it has its pros and cons being structured like that because um, it, it does take some of the joy, like, of teaching out. You mm. know, it's, you have to do this exactly on this day. Um, everything's so structured. Kids are in uniforms. Um, like, they're walking in the halls in a single file line. Yeah. So it, it definitely also didn't fit my personality. I'm pretty lax. Pretty and so, chill. Yeah. And so I, I wasn't a huge fan of making kids, like, sit up straight in a desk and have their hands laced if they weren't writing. Did you ever get in trouble for not following all these little rules? Like, somebody's like, uh, uh, Mr. Osmond, can I see you in the hallway for a second? Like, uh, no, I never got talked to, but a lot of times my demeanor would change a little bit during observations. Mm. And, I, and I think the kids would also pick up on that because um, – our coaches would come in, and if kids weren't doing exactly what they were supposed to, they wouldn't come talk to the teacher. They would just pull the kid outside and kind of talk to them. Damn. And so kids also knew that when everybody knew admin, what time it is yeah, when they walked when admin in, showed up. Yeah, it was straighten up and focus. In public school, they don't care. They're like, "Oh, admin's here. Oh shit, I'm really about to. Sh- yeah, I'm really about to show you who I am." That's definitely one of the big differences between charters and public. Yeah. So what's the difference of different grade levels? Because a lot of teachers are out there. Mm-hmm. And especially for new teachers, they're getting into teaching. They may not know, okay, do I want to be in elementary school, middle school, high school? I know for me personally, I knew from day one that I wanted to do high school. When I became a sub, I didn't even substitute elementary schools. I did not substitute middle schools. I went straight for high school because I, I just knew that's where my people were. So how did you kind of figure it out? And then what's the differences from going from one to the next. Okay. Um, yeah, originally I was put into fifth grade because middle school was the only option for the alternative certification I did. Mm. I would have chose high school. Um, <laughs> but I got into middle school, and I actually ended up enjoying it. The kids are super sweet still. Um, you get lots of little thank you cards and, you know, all the little moments. Candy. Yeah, candy. Yep, and they still make a huge deal when they find out it's your birthday. And, nice. Um, yeah, I've got, you know, backpack full of just all the different notes from different years. and. Definitely got way more little like thank you notes and mm-hmm. appreciation notes from middle school rather than high school, yeah. Um, but I enjoy high school more uh, mainly because of the content. Mm. I love science. I love getting into like deeper content, having more um, discussions with kids rather than right. just like memorize these facts and kind of understand a food web. Um, so yeah, I just really love the content. And that's why I stick with high school now. Same, like yeah. when because. In high school, you, especially when you start talking to juniors and seniors, people who have a driver's license, people who have jobs, who may have gone through a little bit more adversity, yeah. like we can really talk about life in our classrooms. And then a lot of times those freshmen can kind of just sit back and listen, uh, even though some of them feel like they know everything. Yeah, uh, You do have some that are very observing and they're kind of taking it all in. So when you can have those kinds of conversations, mm-hmm. that is one of the, that's one of the things that keep me, keeps me coming back every day. And just like me, you are a person that I feel like is excited, you know, to come to work every day. Uh, I know that's not everybody, which is, yeah. you know, part of the reason why we're doing this show yeah, right yep. now. Um, so let's jump into some of the things that do kind of get in the way. You know, the show is about burnout, time management, Mm -hmm. and work-life balance. So which one of these things do you feel like has been the most difficult for you? And that, I know that can change at different times because we're both fathers, you know, we're both married. So how have you had to navigate those different spaces at different times as you become a teacher? Yeah, starting out, I definitely did not have a good work-life balance. <laughs> None uh, of us do. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, you know, first-year teachers, my heart goes out to you because it is difficult mm. figuring out mm. all this in that first year. Um, but it does get exponentially easier as you go, as you move forward. Um, yeah, I would say work-life balance those first couple of years, I was bringing home work and doing hours of work every night. Yeah. Um, on weekends, I usually devoted like one full day to like grading or oh, doing lesson plans for the following week. 
Um, but again, this was also at a charter school where they ask more of lesson plans. Right. Like a single lesson plan for me for a single day could have been like eight to ten pages long. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, you had all your teaks there, but you also had all the student materials. You completed all the student materials, and then you thought about where they're going to get stuck. You had uh, CFU questions scripted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a lot. Um, I also think when you change subjects, too, it's almost, it's not as much as starting over, but it definitely increases the workload. Mm -hmm. um, that first year changing subjects. I've taught fifth grade science, sixth grade science, seventh grade science, eighth grade science. Ooh. Uh, and then I've taught freshman biology, and then I've taught AP biology, AP environmental science, and now this Gosh. year I'm doing ag. Yeah. That uh, is a lot. Yeah, I've done a lot of different classes. Um, and I've stayed, the one, the one I stayed in most um, was fifth grade science. I taught that for three years in a row. And by that third year, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. You're just tweaking things. Yep. You yep. have time to actually add in like projects. Yep. Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest things I got from actually the person I replaced my first year teaching, she <laughs> left a note for whoever took her place. She didn't know me yet. Um, but there's just a note on the desk and it said, um, and she had actually left teaching. She was no longer a teacher. She was an amazing teacher. Her test scores were great with her kids. Kids mm -hmm. loved her. Um, but she left to go work with turtles in uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Wow. <laughs> what? But she left this note that said, um, you know, work-life balance is the biggest thing, the biggest priority you need to work on right now, and there's always room for a great project next year. So she was kind of saying, don't stress on trying to hit every idea you see out mm. there. You can always add it in the next year um, and in the, in the following years and just build on your course. So work-life balance has had been a struggle for you early. Yeah, early on, yep. So how is it now? How many years have you been teaching? Uh, Tell me this will be my 10th year teaching. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's definitely better. I, I am in a new position, which does have mm -hmm. you know me working a little more at home than I probably will the following year, staying in the position. Um, but most weekends, I don't do much. Uh, most weekdays, maybe a half hour at home. Um, yep. Or just once school ends, I'll stay here for a half hour and get it done. Um, the big thing is making use of your planning periods. Yes. I know, like when I first started, it was a lot of times going to talk to other first-year teachers and kind of commiserate with them on mm -hmm. <laughs> how stuck we are and how much work we had. Um, but now it's just kind of really buckling down in those planning periods, getting whatever you need to do done. Uh, prioritizing is a big thing. You yeah. can't do it all. Um, so think about what you know, the two, three things you need to do today that will help you tomorrow and the rest can wait. Man, there's always more work to do. <laughs> yeah. And I think that when I learned that and it was just like, huh, I don't have to take this, take this home Yeah. and it'll be here tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I can pick up where I left off. And like you said, prioritizing is huge because some stuff, like all of it is important, right? To yeah. our jobs. Yep. Some some things are urgent, like this needs to be done now, today. Yeah. And usually that's the stuff that you want to do in your classroom or something that you got to email about yeah. <laughs> that yep. you need to have turned in. Yep. So you, you're, talk, uh, you're talking about being an ag teacher now where there is so much that goes into it. And me just being uh, cool with the teachers who were here before you that did yeah. it and then now having you and – the other ag teacher right next door to me, yep. uh, I get to kind of see a lot of it, you know, firsthand, you know, when y'all bring the animals in, y'all are doing dissections today. And I would, I tell people, ag teachers, especially when rodeo comes around, yeah. like they work as much or more as like a football or basketball coach, you know, j so yeah. talk about, you know, jumping into ag and, you know, how did that happen? Yeah, it's been a big transition because um, I've never really did any extracurriculars. I did like environmental club one year uh, when I taught AP environmental science, and we just met once a month. Mm -hmm. um, with ag, it's it's you know every week, several days after school, there's something that maybe go check on the animals at the barn. Um, today we were having kids pick up their fundraising orders for the yeah. different you know, meats and cheeses that they sold. Um, it's a lot more than I ever thought ag would be. That's for sure. The, a lot mm -hmm. of paperwork, getting all the travel paperwork approved. Oh, the approved. paperwork is the yeah. worst. Yeah. <laughs> um, all the, the money and getting the checks cut for these different contests and entries and the, the area contests. Um, and so it's a lot. Um, but I think 
one of the biggest things is just relying on people in the community. And mm -hmm. so all the ag teachers that are in our district have been super helpful. We have a group chat where there's a lot of new ag teachers, and if someone doesn't know something, they just post it in there, and usually two or three minutes later, a prof you know, a ag teacher that's been here a while will jump on and kind of respond and say, what, what do you need? How do you need it? I can email it to you. So what's the, what's the work-life balance like curve now? Like how are you figuring it out since you have this new role that is very demanding? Yeah, it's definitely not as easy it was as my previous like two years, three years of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of got in the groove with doing biology yep, and piece science. Of cake. Yeah, and I'd walk in and <laughs> knew exactly what I was doing that day and didn't have any extra, extracurriculars. So, you know, it's once that day was done, I just headed home. Um, but now it's, you know, following up on kids and their parents and see if they filled out all this form, got mm -hmm, it notarized, mm -hmm. um, going to tag ins for like lambs, getting a, a t ear tag put in for Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Um, so it's definitely creeped back up there where work life balance isn't evened out exactly as I'd like it again. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it takes time. Like in an annual yeah. role, like I said, it'll, next year will be easier. Right, so right, right, right. It's always just looking toward. <laughs> making it easier and finding those ways to kind of help each other out and make it easier. Yeah, part of it, like you said, is being in that new role and you don't know what you don't know yet. Yeah. You know, you don't have the yes. whole thing planned out yet because I've been teaching the same class. This is my fifth year teaching the same class. Yeah. So I can like literally roll out of bed and go, huh, what are we doing today? Yeah. Get to class. And it's all planned out, you know, either it's on, I know some people use calendars mm -hmm. or like a spreadsheet. We have Schoology that we put everything in, yeah, like our online just... platform. And so I just look in there like, oh, okay, here we are. Yeah, I know where we are today. Yeah. You know, so um, I guess what would be some strategies that you would give uh, first a new teacher and then a seasoned teacher on how to figure out you know that work-life balance um i think for a new teacher again it's you know n this year doesn't have to go perfect and it's not going to go perfect it's not no it <laughs> there's <laughs> no way it. <laughs> um you just got to make it through it and make sure the kids are safe and they learned mm -hmm. something in your class that's kind of where it boils down to first year teachers yeah um, and so I think some of the things that help with that are just making sure you've got something to talk about tomorrow. That's the big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for me, I think the kids respect it a lot when you can get grading done in a timely manner. Man. Yeah, yeah. they do. Cause I they, agree yeah, that. they ref definitely let you know if something hasn't been graded over several days. And they let you know when yeah. other people don't yes. get their grades done. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I think the biggest thing is just having something for the next day. Don't worry about three weeks from now cause it's probably going to change anyway. Um, or you'll have a fire drill that day, or you'll have oh something gosh. that throws it, inclement weather day, whatever it is. Just worry about having something for the next day and kind of get that grading done. And then for a seasoned teacher? Um, for seasoned teachers, I would just kind of focus on not trying to do too many like new projects and new ideas each mm -hmm. year. Um, just add in a few, see how they go, learn from those new projects. Maybe it did not work at all, and you're going to just get rid of it next year and try something else. Um, but don't feel like you have to do every new idea you see out there. Yeah, you yeah. Just kind of pick and choose. That's one of the things, because I'm always thinking of different stuff. Yeah. It's just, I may see a video, and this uh, is how I came up with one of the projects I've been doing for, I don't know, last two or three years, because yeah. I was watching this video on different schools around the world. And so the video is 28 minutes long. But I watched the entire thing and I was like, huh, what if my kids could do a project where they made their own school? Because they always complain mm -hmm. about school. Yeah, oh yeah. Yep. I wish school was this or that. So it kind of went hand in hand. And I go, okay, I obviously have to build out a criteria. What am I looking for? What I'm expecting? How are they going to present it? How long does it have to be? Yeah. And so I put all of that stuff together. But for me, inspiration can strike anywhere. So sometimes I'm like, all right. We're doing this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're getting to the last part okay. where we're going to talk about five W's in the H. You know what they are? The five W's five in w, the H. What, where, why, when, uh -huh. who, and how? Yes, there you okay. go. All right. 
Sometimes I'm like, do I know them? Okay. I feel like that was what, ELA class? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. ELA. That was not my strong These are suit. the ways that you extract information <laughs> yeah. from people when you ask these questions. So um, I'll let you choose. Which okay. one, which W do you want to do first? Mm, I'm intrigued as the who. Let's do the who. Okay. Who's the student that you'll remember forever? Ooh. Um, that was my first year teaching. Um, wow. Yeah. And it was a, a sweet little fifth grader. Her name was Mia. And she was just so just passionate about science. And I could just tell fifth from fifth grade. Yeah. Fifth grade, wow. which was crazy. Um, and she wanted to be a vet. That was her like dream. And so I had worked with animals. So we would talk all the time, just any like downtime mm -hmm. we had mm -hmm. on lunch duty, whatever it was. Um, just about how she was going to become a vet and what she needed to learn to do that. And she was just so sweet. And at the end of the year, she gave me, um, so I taught at a charter school where it was 90% free and reduced lunch. So it was kind of oh, a okay, yeah. Yeah, rougher area, not a lot of money. Um, and she ended up giving me this really big gift bag. And then on the inside, it was a bunch of wrapping paper and like just tissue paper. And I started pulling it out and just kept digging. And there was just like a single quarter in there. <laughs> And she was like, I know I don't have much, but I wanted to give you something for, for all the stuff you taught me this year. Wow. Um, and yeah, I still have that quarter. I actually have it, uh, drilled a hole in it and put it on my keychain at home. So that'll be definitely one I remember for life. Mr. Osmond's yep. about to tear up over here. <laughs> yep. That was a great student. Man. Yep. Those are the ones. Mm hmm You're like, I'll never forget this person. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. And just, she was so passionate about it. It was great. Okay, next W. Um, let's do what? All right, here we go. What's your restroom policy? Oh man. <laughs> and <laughs> do or did you ever have like a ridiculous restroom pass? Um, I I kind of have one this year. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, but no, my restroom policy will start with that. Uh, so no restroom in the first and last ten of okay. class. Yep. Um, ten ten rule. Yep. And then it's one out at a time. Mm -hmm. They have to sign out. There's a sign out sheet up there okay, where okay. the kids fill it out. That way I don't have to fill it out. Yep. Puts it on them. That way you can keep teaching in case they, you know, ask during instruction. Mm -hmm. um, and then my restroom pass this year it was a cow. It was a little cow statue. <laughs> Pretty good sized cow statue. Um, someone had taken it to the restroom. They put it on the counter, went to the restroom, came back, and it was gone. So someone else wanted the cow. Wow. Yeah. So now I have a little horse, a miniature horse statue. <laughs> And I actually just have random science artifacts throughout my classroom. And so for a while, they were taking a deer femur. So an oh. actual bone. <laughs> a yes. leg bone from a deer. Yep. That's serious business right there. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Here, take this. Take this that, animal that's what head. It was. <laughs> yep. I didn't, I didn't know what else to give. And I was like, here, take this bone. I don't, the cow's gone. So just take this deer bone. A teacher, whoever sees you in the hallway, they will know that that is not yours. Yes. And that's probably your past. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I think I have the best restroom pass in the building. So, <laughs> what do you have? So it's this blue basket. It's okay. about a foot long, and maybe six inches wide. Okay, and it's kind of like a web basket out of plastic, though. And I have restroom passes taped on it. <laughs> so they're a certain color. We used to have a certain color pass, like for our area of the building. Okay. So I taped those to it because they, you know, the admin they want you to use yeah. this pass. I'm yeah. like, I'm not using that. Yeah. But I'm going to follow the rules somehow. And also on it is my uh, podcast business card <laughs> from my last show. So there's like, a, there's one, there's like three taped on it on the inside that shows the front. And nice. then three on the outside that shows the so back. So a little advertising so as well. So a little advertising. Yep. People know whose pass it is. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's walking on the other side of the building, there's like, that's Mr. Franklin's pass. What yeah. are you doing over here? Yeah. So it, it it really works. That yeah, that does work well. It does work. All right. Okay, let's go with our next W. We're done with who, and we've done what. Uh, let's do why. Okay, why is being a teacher so difficult? Oh man, that is a tough one. Um, I think one of the reasons it's so difficult is because you really are in charge of like kids education mm. and there's just so many differences in that classroom every oh, day yeah. different styles of learning 
different people that have to go home and maybe don't have a meal, maybe don't have. Yeah. Um, and there, there's so many other things. There's, you know, 30 other brains that have 30 other million things going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's trying to get all 30 of those differences together, learning the same thing at the same time. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's one of the most difficult things about it. Man. So as you were saying that, I was thinking of a question. Who is harder to teach? The kid that goes home and has nothing or the kid that goes home and has everything? Because that kid that has nothing, yeah. they're almost like, like, this is not really that important to me. I have to go to work and provide you know, for my family because X, Y, Z is happening. Yeah. But that kid that has everything, they're like, this is not really that important because I don't care and I don't want to do it. Yeah, I think... I would say it is a little harder to teach a kid that's got nothing at home mm-hmm. um, just because they've got so many other cares to worry about. Right. And this topic is probably not going to, you know, help them at home. It's like there's so many classes where it may not apply to their daily life yet. Yeah, Maybe in the right, future. Right, right. Yeah. But yet. Um, but I think it's also more rewarding when you get that aha moment in a kid that has nothing mm-hmm. um, and they actually find something that they're passionate in, you find some way to link what you're learning about to what mm-hmm. they care about. Um, and I think that one is more rewarding. Okay. And then they come back and go, you know what, Mr. Osmond, you taught me this thing and I was actually able to use it. Yeah. And now I got this job, or whatever. Yeah. You know, because of what I teach, I kind of get that a lot because I teach them how to interview and how to talk mm-hmm. in front of people. Yeah. So they're like, I'm glad you taught me how to do an interview because I had one and, you know, I got the job. So yeah, it's that's a very useful fun. skill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so we've done who, what, and we've done why. So we got when and where left. Uh, let's go with when. Okay. When did you begin to feel confident in yourself as a teacher? There you go. I think I, I, think I got a handle on this. Um, it was probably my third year teaching, mm-hmm. I would say. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that was, again, the third year of teaching the same content in the same grade level, that fifth grade science. And I felt like in that third year, like, I, like you were saying, you got up, you knew what you were teaching that day, mm-hmm. you knew some tweaks, you already knew like where kids struggled in that topic, so yep. you could get ahead of that misconception. Um, so yeah, I'd say probably year three. <laughs> yeah, and it was probably three. like a couple months into year three, because it's part of the first start of the year... Just even oh now, still gives you butterflies, <laughs> still worried about who's going to be in your class and, you know, am I going to be able to teach these kids? Um, so, yeah, probably third month of the third year. Yeah. And then just the beginning of the year has so much going on. With yeah. Just just being in school. Like, now I got to teach all my expectations. I'm yep. starting everything all over. So that beginning of the year is, is crazy for everybody. Yeah. Year one to year 35. Yep. Okay. Our last one is our where. So, where did you see yourself five years ago, and are you there, or did it change along the way? Yeah, it definitely changed. Uh, five years ago, so I, I just finished teaching at middle school, and I knew I wanted to get to high school, and so I got my additional certifications okay. in Tennessee. Welcome. Yep. Um, and so I was in high school, and I was teaching AP Biology and AP Environmental Science, and I thought, like, that was it. Like, this is what I'm going to do. I love AP, like, college level. Mm-hmm. Um, and I probably thought that's where I was going to stay until I retired. Now, um, I probably stay in ag. Uh, I really enjoy ag. You get that's not lots, a surprise. Yeah, you get lots of different characters in here that take ag classes for various mm-hmm. reasons. Mm-hmm. Some didn't choose an elective, so they just show up <laughs> not even knowing what class they're in. Um, and others that, you know, know they want to be a vet or they want mm-hmm. to have a ranch one day. Um, and every single day so far in ag has not been what I expected. It's just been different, fun. Time goes by super fast. Um, and so, yeah, I'll probably stay with ag for a while. Okay. So it's okay to change course. Like, yep. The plan can change. You oh, know? yeah. Some people are like, oh, this is what I want to do forever. You're like, you don't even know. Like, just just time out, okay? Just take it one day at a time, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we got to go to our how. And I think this is, uh, there's a couple of different parts here. So how do you keep coming back to school every day? And are you happy with that decision? I keep coming back coffee. 
uh, gets me back. <laughs> uh, now I get up every morning and, you know, there's that little like, oh, I don't want to go to school today. Yep. Um, and that's usually the hardest part is just the drive here. Mm-hmm. And then once I'm here, I mean, the day flies by. Um, you know, kids are saying, you know, oh, how's your day going? Or where have you been? Were you out yesterday? Um, and it's the million questions you get that you never thought you'd be asked in your life in the middle of a lesson. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, just mainly the kids that keep me here and mm. keep me going. So I'm guessing you're happy with that decision. Yeah, yeah, I am happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I always, I always dread coming in. But once I'm here, I'm happy with being here. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Oz, I think we're good to go, man. It was it was a pleasure having you on. And I'll just say, like, for just for you and also for the listeners out there, uh, I wanted to, to have you on because I see what you do every day, you know, next door. And one of my biggest pet peeves uh, is teachers that don't make learning fun. You know, oh, just doing okay, the yeah. same old stuff all the time. And it just stinks. The kids hate it. You yeah. know, but the stuff that I see that you're all doing over here, I'm like, I need to be down. I need to be an act. Like, I, I need yeah, to. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most hands-on classes I've ever taught. Out of yeah. all the subjects and all the grade levels, this is the most, like, in one class we're making floral arrangements, and the next we're dissecting a pig, and the third Man. we're composting soil. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> just the stuff that I see that you come up with that makes learning fun is something that I appreciate. Uh, not just, you know, I mean, I'm not in the class, but I yeah. appreciate it for the kids and, uh, I admire because it's something I strive to do too. So well, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having me. I think we're good to go. All right. Voila. I hope you all enjoyed that conversation between me and Mr. Oz. It was a pleasure having him on as I knew it would be. Before we leave, remember, curiosity needs to be cultivated and not always great. Students need room to make mistakes and take chances. Also, the learning environment will take on your personality. Create one that people want to be a part of. Thank you for listening. Keep teaching, keep learning, and I will see you all on the next journey.